Dr. Jumana Nagrila, the lead litigant in a notable genital mutilation case who has been bolted up for five months in the wake of being blamed for damaging more than 100 young ladies' private parts on United States soil is going to taste opportunity again after her companions and partners set up more than $4.5 million in property to secure bond. That, alongside different variables, persuaded U.S. Region Judge Bernard Friedman to concede cling to Nagrila, in spite of the administration's statement that Nagrila subjected more than 100 minor young ladies to genital cutting methodology. Friedman inferred that Nagrila isn't a flight hazard given all that her loved ones need to lose should she escape. I invested a great deal of energy inspecting this, said Friedman, taking note of the general population who have approached to help Nagrila and the cash they are setting up are exceptionally considerable. 100% fed up reports, the insidiousness in this is so ridiculous. The Michigan instance of a specialist who honed the custom of female genital mutilation on Muslim young ladies has finished with the discharge and house capture of the wrongdoers who still claim their blamelessness. They guarantee they just scratched the private parts of no less than 100 young ladies who originated from as far away as Minnesota for this terrible methodology. In fact, the young ladies were cut on their privates and vouched for the extreme agony they felt. Court reports said the Minnesota young ladies were advised they were going to Michigan for an uncommon young ladies' trek, and their folks strained them not to talk about the system. One of the young ladies advised agents that they were taken to the specialist's office on the grounds that their tummies hurt and the specialist was going to get the germs out, while the other told experts following the methodology she could scarcely walk, and that she felt torment the distance down to her lower legs. The specialist additionally attempted to cover it up. This lady should be in prison and not simply get a slap on the wrist. Does anybody out there think she'll stop doing this? We question it. The absence of serious discipline will just energize the training here in the U.S. where are every one of the women's activists. Protection lawyer Shannon Smith, who is speaking to Nagrila, said she and her customer were calmed by the choice. Following five months of her being bolted up, it's pleasant to see that she'll have the capacity to be out on bond, Smith said. She is exceptionally upbeat. As per Smith, the people who offered property to secure an Agrilla's bond all live out of state. The property, she stated, is altogether paid off. Nagrilla likewise has been requested to wear a tie and will incidentally live in the lodging. Her two minor youngsters right now live in their home with their dad. Nagrila is permitted just administered visits with the youngsters and could lose her parental rights, however Smith is proceeding to battle that probability and contends Nagrila's kids are flourishing scholastically and by and by and ought to be with both their folks. The arraignment contended against allowing bond to Nagrila, saying she has the assets and thought process to escape, she lost her activity, could lose her parental rights and faces up to life in jail. Discharging her on security could likewise give her more opportunity to quiet observers for the situation, prosecutors have contended, guaranteeing Nagrila has just advised individuals from her religious group to deny everything if examiners get some information about genital cutting strategies. A Virginia mom was in hot water a few months ago for recommending female genital mutilation to prevent hypersexuality. A cover-up and genital mutilation receives little punishment. In campaigning against Bond, assistant U.S. lawyer Sarah Woodward contended today that Nagrila is the person who coordinated a 12-year connivance that included conveying young ladies to a Livonia facility for genital cutting systems. Additionally, she focused on, Nagrila was the person who employed the instrument to cut a few young ladies and afterward endeavored to cover it up. No harm? The Guard has asserted that the legislature is exaggerating its case and that Nagrila and her co-litigants were taking part in a religious system that included no damage. The case includes eight respondents, including two specialists, a doctor of significant other and four moms, who are blamed for taking an interest in different degrees of subjecting young ladies to genital cutting as a major aspect of a religious practice inside their Indian Muslim faction. All litigants are individuals from the Dalwood Ibarra, a little Indian Muslim faction with a mosque in Farmington Hills that practices female circumcision and trusts it is a religious soul-changing experience that includes just a minor scratch. 
The lead respondent is Nagrila, a now terminated crisis room doctor at Henry Ford, who is accused of playing out the strategy on six young ladies at a Livonia facility. Two of the young ladies are from Minnesota, four from Michigan. The center proprietor and his better half have likewise been charged. Dr. Fakhruddin Adder, 53, of Farmington Hills, is blamed for giving Nagrila a chance to utilize his center to perform genital cutting systems on minor young ladies, and his significant other, Faraida Adder, 50, is blamed for holding the young ladies' hands amid the technique to shield them from squirming and to quiet them. Four moms additionally have been charged for the situation, blamed for putting their girls in hurt's root by giving Nagrila a chance to cut their private parts as a major aspect of a religious method. Prosecutors have contended that the government genital mutilation law is clear, it denies intentionally circumcising, excising or infibulating the entire or any piece of the labia major or labia minor or clitoris of whatever other individual who has not achieved the age of 18 years. Agonizing. Dash what happened to do no harm? As indicated by court archives, in interviews with experts, the two Minnesota casualties portrayed the genital cutting techniques as agonizing. One young lady said that she got a shot, shouted, and could scarcely stroll after the technique, and that she felt torment the distance down to her lower leg. The other said she was laid on a looking at table with her knees close to her chest and legs spread separated, that she was squeezed in the genital range that it hurted a ton and that there was agony and consuming. The two young ladies were disclosed to keep the methodology a mystery, court records appear. One said the specialist made her, companion, cry. Particularly heinous, specialists have contended, is that this strategy was completed by a specialist who guaranteed to do no damage. She realized this was illicit however did it at any rate, Woodward has said of Nagrila, worrying. As a restorative specialist, she knows that female genital mutilation has no therapeutic reason.